Let's look at one example of how GD&T can be really useful. If we have a table and we want to control how tall it is, um, what we can do is assign a tolerance to, say, the 15-inch dimension. So if we apply a tolerance of plus or minus 0.5, then the table can move up and down a half an inch. So the total variation can be one inch. According to rule number one, rule number one says, where only a tolerance of size is specified, the limits of size of an individual feature prescribe the extent to which variations in its geometric form as well as its size are allowed. In other words, if we've got a plus or minus half inch dimension on the height, and that is the only thing that is controlling the form of the top of the table, the top of the table has to lie within that tolerance zone. The plus or minus a half inch is adequate for the height of the table, but we'd rather have a more flat surface, and that's where GD&T can help us. We can apply a flatness tolerance that's tighter to the top of the table. So the top of the table will have to be flat, and we can leave the plus or minus a half an inch because we don't want to be overly restrictive on the height of the table.